to say now from Paris is Arun Jaitley. He's India's defence and finance minister. Minister, great to have you with us on the programme. There are some cracks in the emerging market story at the moment. Brazil, a political mess. The story in South Africa falling into recession. India is an area of significant growth, but things are a little bit softer at the moment. I want me, you to give me your view on what you think is happening in the country uh, and what the ministry can actually do to support growth and get things back on, on a high track. Well, first of all, let me tell you, the word poor may not be appropriate. In the last three years, we've had a 7.5%, 8%, and a 7.1% growth. Last year, on account of global demand uh, uh, being depressing a little, the capacity of Indian banks to support growth being somewhat inadequate, we were anticipating a lower growth rate. And... Uh, even then, notwithstanding the fact that demonetization took place in the third quarter of last year, we've ended the year with a 7.1% growth. It is lower by the Indian normal, but our normal today is 7 to 8%. I do believe that India has carried on a large number of structural reforms in the last few years. And now with the kind of structural reforms which are setting in, the kind of public expenditure and the foreign direct investment we are getting in, I do expect the growth to turn around and improve this year. That's what all global agencies uh, are indicating. I do believe that as a net effect of the demonetization, that is the integration of the informal economy with the formal one, the GST likely to set in by the 1st of July this year, hopefully with a good monsoon being predicted this year, the growth revival is again going to take place. The one important challenge that we have is with regard to a private sector investment. We do believe that the global curve is also turning, though turning slowly. Domestic consumption is improving. And hopefully, yeah. if we are able over the next one year or so, address the problem of the Indian banking system itself, we will again pick up significant growth. Minister, in the first quarter, there was a slowdown on GDP. We fell back to a six handle. The estimate's still 7% for the full year 2017 granted. And I just wonder how much capacity you have to push forward to en enable these banks to have more public sector bank mergers, mergers. Is that something you can achieve without pushing growth further down? Well, I think the merger itself will only strengthen the Indian banks. It won't weaken them. It won't weaken the capacity of the banks to support growth. I don't think India needs uh, uh, numerically a very large number of public sector banks because banking industry has undergone a significant change. We have foreign banks, we have private sector banks, we have payment banks. And now the nature of the banking industry with technology itself has changed. And therefore, I have announced that amalgamation and merger is something which is very much on the cards. The first big one of the state bank with its subsidiaries has already taken place. And I'm sure we are in the pipeline. We'll be, we'll be contemplating a few more. Initially, the idea was to allow the health of the banks to improve a little. But I think uh, there are some which we can still work on. <coughs> Looking at the story with the high denomination notes, the, the move to ban them, it got tongues wagging around the world in the realm of economics, for global economics. I just want to gauge from you and from what you've indicated so far, do you truly believe that's been a success? You see, I think there have been, uh, we were conscious of the fact that the demonetization to the extent that it causes a cash crunch may temporarily for a quarter or two impact on us adversely. But... There were some long-term advantages which were envisaged. The, the, first, <coughs> sorry, the first significant advantage that has taken place is that there is a great and a substantial movement towards digitization of the economy which is taking place. That is, yeah. the user of the cash relatively comes down. The user of other modes of payment increases. The second is there is a substantial number of assessees which has been added. In fact, in the first three months after demonetization, 9.2 million new assessees have been, tax assessees have been added. Therefore, I anticipate that tax collections in the years to come will substantially increase. Thirdly, yeah. I think a new normal has been established in India and a message has gone loud and clear that it's no longer safe to deal substantially in cash. <coughs> Sir, just to reply and, and get your thoughts on the RBI, can I ask you what you think of the MPC declining to meet with finance ministry officials before the policy meeting and today's decision? 
I think I think it is uh, the, uh, the, the finance ministry represents the government of India, and the finance ministry representing the government is an accountable institution. Therefore, the government to give its own assessment of the economy to the Reserve Bank is is, is the normal dumb thing. And therefore, whether yeah. it's done orally or it's done in writing, it's immaterial. I think uh, 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 it's an important input that the economic division of the finance ministry gives its input to the central bank. Ultimately, it's within the domain and the authority of the central bank itself to decide the rates. And we always respect that jurisdiction. Well, let's get your view very quickly. Should they have cut rates today? Well, they've already announced the policy. And, uh, and I'm here far off, and normally I don't comment on it. The ministry makes a formal statement, which they would be making in yeah. due course. Aaron Jaley, India's finance minister, great to have you with us on the programme. Thank you very much.